grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings and greetings be unto every one of you on this uh, Tuesday, May 21st, 2024, as we gather for Bible study. What an awesome opportunity and privilege it is to be together once again as we gather to study God's word and hear what God is saying to us through the scripture. It's amazing that even though the scripture was written thousands of years ago, over 1,500 year period, that it is still applicable uh, to our lives today. And so we're so grateful that God has allowed us to be together here tonight as we study God's word and um, in the Bible, amen, and we thank God. Uh, we know a lot of people don't like the Bible anymore, but, but but we still, we still, you know, we still, we still thank God that it is still the word of God. It's still applicable. People say it's old fashioned and that it's not good, but no, it's still good. It's still applicable and it's still the word of God. That's our faith as Christians, that the Bible is still the word of God and it, it will ever be the word of God. And, and so we thank God for that. And it is, it is God pouring out God's heart to us, his people. And so we're grateful for that. So people of God, we continue our study in the second book of the Bible, uh, the second of the 66 that are in the Bible. We continue our study in Exodus. And tonight we are continuing in Exodus chapter 25. We ended last week with Exodus chapter 25, verse 22. But we're going to continue tonight with Exodus uh, 25, verses 23 to 40. All right. Exodus 25, verses 23 to 40. We're going to finish out Exodus 25 as we continue looking at the tabernacle, all right, and the furnishings that are in the tabernacle. So shall we pray as you get that together, as you do that, get your apparatuses, pencils, notepads, whatever. I pray you got that beforehand, but if not, feel free to take this time to do so. Um, and um, whatever you need for, for Bible study, and I highlight or whatever you have so that you can highlight these things and you can come back to it hopefully later on uh, later on in your um, walk with the Lord. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this for this hour, this opportunity to be together as we study your word. Thank you for bringing us to another day, a day that you have made, and we are so glad that you allowed us to see this day that we've never seen before, and we've never seen it, and we'll never see again. We're so grateful, God, that you saw fit for us to be here today. We're thankful, God, that you, that you have seen fit for us to be here tonight as we gather to study your word. Lord, we pray now that you would speak to us through your scripture through this scripture that is still alive and active. We pray God that we pray God that your word would be proclaimed tonight in the way that in the way that you want it to and Lord that it be taken the way it was written the way the way it was written and that and that we ask God that and we ask God that it would edify that it would edify us as we as we hear your word father that we be built up built up to be to be in service for you and built up to live lives lives that that represent you in this world. So, Lord, we pray that you would speak to us tonight. Let, we, let us take something that we didn't take before. And let us, Lord, let us, Lord, take something that we'd be able to share with somebody else. But we pray, God, that when it is all said and done, that we, your people, be edified. The devil and his demons be horrified. And most of all, God, we pray that you be glorified. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, yes, we're in the book of Exodus. And just a brief background of the book of this book, as, as most scholars agree, the first five books of the Bible written by Moses. All right. Uh, the first five books of the Bible, which are written by Moses. Uh, and the first book, the first five books of the Bible are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Again, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. All right. So we're in that second book and that and we're in that second book. And it is written by Moses and God's people are coming out of of um of um slavery or bondage in Egypt and they're coming out of that and that was a very very interesting period 400 years of being in Egyptian oppression and now God's people are coming out people of God and they're making their way to the promised land now it's not an easy journey people of God and the people complained yes and they complained a little bit and they said well did you just leave us out here to die where there are not enough graves in Egypt you know so and, and so and so they complained a little bit when things when, when things didn't always look too well and they were just wandering and wandering and they were wandering for 40 something years and as, as, as we already, as we know that. And so they're in that wandering stage, people of God. They're in that wandering stage. And um, the, the Lord, the, the Lord in Exodus chapter 20, he spoke to Moses, people of God. 
and, and, the, and, and the entirety of Israel and they heard the Ten Commandments and then after that Israel said we don't want to hear from the Lord anymore after what the Lord did all those demonstrations how there was smoke on the mountain and all of that and the fire and all that they didn't want to see that anymore they said no we don't want to see that anymore and so Moses began to speak to the Lord directly and the Lord spoke to him and not to Israel as a whole and so that's what that that's what's happened and then and so the Lord gave them all those laws all right and then right back there if you go to Exodus chapter 24 Israel accepted the Lord's covenant the Lord Israel accepted the Lord's commandments and they said we're going to do it and Moses went back up praise the Lord he went back up higher and now he goes into the Shekinah glory cloud he goes into the cloud people of God that has been covering this mountain and he um he goes into that we're talking about Mount Sinai and he goes into this cloud people of God and the Lord has been giving him some plans since last week when we started looking at this some some plans and certain uh, certain things together for the tabernacle and the tabernacle would be the dwelling of God among God's people the tabernacle would be a portable worship tent of a portable tent, praise the Lord, that Israel would have among them, uh, symbolic of, of, of the presence and the dwelling of God among them. And so we looked at the Ark of the Covenant last week, this is symbolic of the presence of God, and it would have been in the tabernacle. Please go back and watch that Bible study. I don't want to break all of that down now, but we're going to go now into the plans for the table. So you had the Ark of the Covenant, and now we're going into the plans of the table. And let's see what that's about. What does that mean? Thou shalt also make a table of sheetam wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. People of God, we are here tonight. Of course, remember last week, remember last week, people of God, God has been listing some things to Moses concerning some items that should be in the tabernacle or the dwelling. The first was the Ark of the Covenant, symbolizing the presence of God among God's people. Now God talks about the table, a table. And of course, this table is called the table of showbread. All right, showbread. You can write that down in your notes. It's called the table of showbread. And this table, people of God, just like the Ark of the Covenant, would have been made of sheetum, a uh, 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 sheetum, uh, sheetum wood. Some versions, of, of, some versions of scripture may say a kai or or. Or acacia, sire, or acacia, or however you, or however you go ahead and you and, and you and you go and you pronounce that. All right, but whatever that is, people of God, sheetum, people, sheetum wood, um, and 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 so it would have been made of the same wood. And of course, if you go back it earlier in the chapter to verse number, uh, if you go back earlier in the chapter, people of God, to about verse number five, this is one of the these. This is one of the things that was. This, this is one of the things that was asked of the people to offer unto God for this work and this project that God was about to do. Now, people of God, so, so, so their offering was not just in vain. When the people offered, remember the, remember last week we looked at how the people offered certain things to help with what God was about to do in this building. Well, people of God, well, people of God, this, that was used. That sheet of wood that they offered was used. It wasn't just put to the side or exploited. It was used for the purposes of God, for the Lord. It was not just used, it was not just exploited or put on the side, right? Like it didn't matter. It, it was used for the purposes of God. When the people gave an offering, it wasn't exploited. All right. Praise the Lord. You know, some preachers need to take a lesson in that. All right, praise the Lord. You know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished, you know. And when the offering was taken, it wasn't exploited. It was used on the things of God. Now should also make a table of sheet and wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof. So the Lord gives, of course, as he did with the Ark of the Covenant. He gives explicit, explicit, he gives explicit dimensions. All right. He gives explicit dimensions with that. This is how it should be. The length thereof, uh, two cubits shall be the length thereof. The length that's about three feet long. All right. A cubit, the breadth, the breadth is the width. So it should have been three feet long, six inches wide, and half the height thereof, which would have been three, uh, which would have been, um, and, and half the height, and a cubit and a half the height thereof, which would have been three inches high. So this table of showbread, this is a table, all right? Put it in your mind, a table. Just think of a table. Praise the Lord. All right, a table, you know, praise the Lord. A table, people of God, put that in your mind right now. I'm going to show you what it would have looked like um, based on the scripture uh, in a few moments. But I want you to just imagine a table in your head, people of God. And so three feet long, 
uh, one foot six inches high. Sorry, I think I said six inches earlier. Three feet long, one foot six inches wide, and two feet three inches high. Once again, three feet long, one foot six inches wide, and two feet three inches high. All right, praise the Lord. Verse 24, and thou shalt overlay it with what? Pure gold. And make there to a crown of gold about, round about. So just a pause really quick. These are the furnishings of the tabernacle. The tabernacle will be a portable tent, all right? A portable tent symbolizing of the dwelling of God among God's people. So that's, that's what it, the tabernacle symbolized. It was a portable tent that they used as they moved throughout. As is that Israel would use as they moved throughout. And this tent had furnishings in it, all right? All right, this tent had furnishings in it. Um, to to um to symbolize the glory of the Lord. It symbolized if it was the dwelling place of God symbolically, then it had to have some furnishing. If it was the house of God symbolically, it had to be furnished like a house. And so you have the Ark of the Covenant, and next you have people of God as we're dis discussing now the table of showbread. The table of showbread, yes, should be three feet long, one foot six inches wide, and two feet three inches high. And now he says that thou shalt overlay it. Just like the Ark of the Covenant, you shall overlay it with pure gold. Pure gold. Pure gold speaks of purity. It speaks of cleanliness. Clean. It speaks of cleanliness and people of God. Gold is valuable. Pure gold is valuable. Just like people of God, just like people of God. And, and so if you're going to make this uh, symbolic of the dwelling places, the dwelling place of God, then it has to be valuable. Why? Because God, God wants value. Praise the Lord. God wants value. God wants valuable and he wants the best. Praise the Lord. He wants the best. That's why when he outlined worship in Israel, he didn't just say to do anything. No, no, no. There's a certain way. There's a, there is a certain way that these things should be done. Praise the Lord. And then, you know, there, there is a certain way. Praise the Lord. And you should you want to give God best. That's why God wanted the first of the first of verse of the harvest. He wanted the first. He wanted all of that. Why did he want the first? Because he wants the best. That's that, 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 that's what it is. Why is it dedicate the firstborn male to the Lord? Because he wants what? The first. The vow, the best. That, that, that's that, that's what first means. Praise the Lord. All right. Now here we are, people of God. Now here we are, people of God. And and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold and make thereto a crown of gold about. Continue to think of this table in your hand. All right. The table should be overlaid with pure gold, and a crown of gold should be about it. A crown would mean a border or an edging of gold. Something to prevent what was on the table from falling off. There had to be a crown of gold around it. Or something that would be on the table to prevent something from on the table from falling off the table. All right? That's what that would have been. Praise the Lord. And thou shalt make unto it a border of an hand breadth round about. And thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. Now continue. Think of this table in your head, all right? A table. This table of showbread, people of God, it has to be overlaid with gold, okay? And, and, and it has to have something around it to prevent stuff from falling off of it. And thou shalt make unto it a border of an hand breadth round about. A border of an hand breadth is about a band or a framing, all right? A band or a framing. It was a flat bar between the top of the table and the feet of the table that connected the four legs together, keeping the four legs in place. All right. That's what a border of a hand breath roundabout means. And thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof roundabout. A golden, a golden crown to the border. It's not talking about as it did previously in the first verse, rather in this, and not the first verse, the previous verse, but it's saying in this verse when it says a golden crown to the border. An edging at the top of the bar, which could be only for ornament or, or to be used for an ornament. All right. An ornament just means decoration. Praise the Lord. There's something to be on it. Glory to God. Okay. Verse number 26. And thou shalt make for it four rings. Oh, continue to think of this table. And put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. These are one of the furnishings that will go in the tabernacle. God is giving Moses direct instructions on how to do it. All right. If you're going to present this to me, if it's going to be symbolic of my glory, all right, my dwelling place, if, if it's going, there has to be certain credentials. Praise the Lord. You know, certain credentials. Certain credentials. Credential, and, 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 and you can tell what is meant by the way it is. First of all, you can you can tell by the way it is. You can tell by the way it is. 
You can, you can, you can, you can really tell by the way it's built and outlined the purpose of it. All right. That's what God's whole intent is. You know, that's what God's whole intent. Because if if you go somewhere and all you see is a bunch of lights, camera, and action. You know, I just thought I'd bring this up. A bunch of lights, camera, and action, all of that. And, you, you know, and there's, re- and there's really no communion with the people, praise the Lord. They, or, or, or beyond that, let me go over beyond that. Or there's really nothing that's pointing to, to God, you know. It's just a bunch of light, camera, and action. Ain't no cross, ain't nothing. It's a bunch of lights, camera, and action. It's just, just ain't just ain't nothing. Now I'm not saying because we're living in a technology age that we should not. I'm not saying that we should not have that to connect. But when you have a church and it has no symbol of the Lord, something's wrong with that. It's, all right, I'm just I'm, I'm coming in in a minute. Oh, verse 27. Oh, verse 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 26. I'm sorry. I'm getting sick. There you go. But th- there we are. This table was also to have rings and poles on it. All right. So he says, thou shalt make four, four rings of gold. Put four rings of gold on this table. Put the table in your mind, praise the Lord. Put the table in your mind. Four rings of gold on the table. Four rings of gold on the table. And put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. And put the four rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Put, put a ring in each corner of the table. All right? On, on the four feet, talking about... And, and the four feet, people of God, is just the bottom corners of the table. All right. Put rings on it, people of God. Verse 27. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. The staves are the poles. So the idea is, is that this table will have rings and there will be staves or poles put into the ranks, just like the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant had rings on it, and then there were poles that you put in it so that it could be carried. Once again, the furnishings, these furnishings go into the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a movable, was a movable tent or dwelling place so that as Israel was moving around, they could move it. All right. And so that's why that you see you see a lot of the carrying on poles and everything else, because they needed to move these things. Praise the Lord, especially during this wilderness experience. They are not going to be, people of God, hear this. They are not going to be in one place forever. They're they're, they're moving around. The whole goal is to what? Go to the promised land. All right. Verse 20, verse 28. And thou shalt make the staves of sheet of wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be born with them. So here God is telling Moses precisely, he's giving him direct instruction so you know how to do it. He's not leaving him clueless now. He's not leaving him clueless. He's giving him direct instructions and thou shall make the staves. Remember, staves means poles. If you have if you have people of God, if you have another version, it may say poles. But the staves of sheet and wood, this, remember, this is the same wood that Moses collected from the people. The offering was not being exploited. It was being used for the purpose and the intent of God. All right. And overlay them with gold that the table may be born with them. It was to be gold. Gold, once again, speaks of value. All right. Value. It speaks of giving God best. It speaks once again of what? Value, all right. If I was asking you that tonight, if I was asking that the Bible said, you know that it speaks of value. Praise the Lord that the table may be born with them. It repeats, people of God, the staves of sheet and wood, and overlay them with gold that the table may be, all right, that this table may be born with them. So they were, so that the table may be born with them. In other words, have these poles so that they could lift the table, all right. Overlay them with gold so that they can lift the table and move it. Move it. Now, why couldn't they just why couldn't they just why couldn't they just touch it? Why couldn't they just because this, this stuff is holy? Yeah. Then there was the Ark of the Covenant. This stuff is this stuff is holy. Praise the Lord. This, 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 so, so, so that is verse 29. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all a pure gold shall thou make them. Now, people of God. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof. Dishes were now, 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 now. Let me stop here. Let me stop here really quick, and let me show you what the table of showbread looked like, or could have looked like. That's what the table of showbread looked like. All right, praise the Lord. So I said, keep in mind a table. Now you see, those are the poles that are going in through. You see that? That's what that would have looked like, and they would have used and carried that around in Israel. 
All right. They would have used that and carry or not is they were in the nation of Israel, the people of Israel. They would have carried that around, people of God. All right. That's what that would have looked like. And you're about to see what was the point of it as we go forward. What, what is the point of the table? What was the point? And then we're going to connect that with Jesus. All right. Because we know that the whole Bible from start to finish is, is Jesus is all up in that. All right. I know some people want you to think that is not that that, 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 that is not all about him, but it is. All right. Jesus is all up in that. It all testifies of Jesus. Verse 29. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all of pure gold shall thou make them. So now the Lord now is about to lay some things out about how the table of showbread, and why is it called the table of showbread anyhow? What, 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 what is table of showbread? What, is, what, 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 what you mean when you say, what, what do you mean when you say table of showbread? Showbread, showbread just means bread of presence. All right. That's what it means. Bread of presence. So why is it called that? And thou shalt make the dishes thereof. On this table, there were to be dishes. Now, dishes are, of course, deep, a, a deep, large gold dish or other vessels or, or whatever, so that the cakes or the bread could be put in these dishes and placed on the table of showbread and the tabernacle. All right. It was to be placed there. And spoons. Spoons, they were small pots where the um, incense was put and where the incense was burnt. That's found in Leviticus 24, verse 7. People of God and covers and, and covers to one to cover the bread and the other to cover frankincense and all the other vessels to cover it. And bowls and bowls, people of God, bowls to put all bowls to put all of it in a pure gold to cover with all people of God. Cover with all means people of God to pour out. Cover with all uh, to pour out where drink offerings were poured out in libation. That's what covered with all means. Cover with all, which means to pour out. All right. Drink offerings were to be poured out in libation. Poured out in libation. So people of God, so you have this, put the dishes on this table, spoons, which were people of God, pots where they would put the uh, incense, all right, and they would burn it. That's found in Leviticus 24, verse 7, and covers people of God, one to cover the bread and other to cover the frankincense, people of God, and all of the other vessels were used to cover the table, all right, all of these other vessels and bowls thereof. To cover with all, bring bowls to pour, to pour, uh, to pour out drink offerings, libations. Pour that, bring that, bring the bowls so that we can pour those libations. A pure gold shalt thou make them. Once again, pure gold, val, valuable, valuable. It speaks of value. All right, value, value. All right, value. Praise the Lord. And what we offer should be that of value. Verse 30, and thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me away. The purpose of the table of showbread is listed in this verse. The purpose of the table of showbread is listed in this verse. Listed in this verse. And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me away. For a more detailed uh arrangement of this you can find in Leviticus 24 verse 5 to 9 if you want to see a more detailed arrangement of how they put it on there we'll be studying Leviticus uh after Exodus but um but you, that'll probably be in a while but you, you, if you want to just go ahead and look at that already because you should be studying yourself anyway um but Leviticus 24 verses 5 to 9 you find that all right and how they put it up and how they gathered it and how they set it up people of God how it was set up and of course as i said earlier show bread just means bread of the presence all right and so and, and so that that means that this bread was always set before the presence of God remember the tabernacle is the dwelling place of God the ark of the covenant was symbolic of the presence of God so people of God as this bread was in the tabernacle the, the symbolic dwelling place of God then that people of God then that people of God it, it, it was symbolic this bread was always before the presence of God and people of God on the table of showbread, if you read Leviticus 24, if you read Leviticus 24, uh, 
uh, if you read Leviticus 24, verse 5 to 9, you find that on the table of showbread, there were 12 loaves of bread, each for one nation, one tribe of Israel. There were 12 loaves, of, there were 12 loaves of bread on this table, each for uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. One for one for each one of, one for each of the twelve tribes of Israel, and so this and, and so this was bread. Uh, this was bread in front of the face of God, symbolically. All right, and so symbolic of the twelve tribes of Israel. It means that as you're in the presence of God, God is constantly in fellowship and communion with Israel. And the table. Keep in mind the table in that era and even in this era in many cultures is symbolic of fellowship. It's symbolic of communion. So as the bread is on the table and the bread represents the 12 tribes of Israel, it's symbolic of God having fellowship and communion with Israel. All right. And now, now what does this, what does this mean for us? What is what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? Now, now, now what, what does that mean for us as Christians? Because we got we got to take something from that. You know, we have to take something from it. What does that mean? That it means for us, people of God, that we too. We too are now keeping now Jesus. Let's just put this Jesus. This bread was in the tabernacle. All right. It was it was in the tabernacle, and nobody could go in the tabernacle except the priest, and nobody went in the holy of holies except the high priest. So people of so people so people of God, what you have here, Jesus is able, as he Jesus says he's the bread of life. Isn't that what he said? And whoever comes to him will never hunger. And so as Jesus is in the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God, and is the only one that can come to God because he is without sin. And Jesus is the only one that can come to God and be that mediator between us and God and is the bread of life and is the reason why we have fellowship with God. All right. So that's the parallel there. Just as the bread on that table record, uh, uh, was symbolic of fellowship, all right, with symbolic of fellowship, Jesus Christ, who is the bread of life, who stands in the presence of God as our mediator, people of God, is the only reason why we have fellowship with God. Praise the Lord. It, it, ain't, your, it ain't your marriage. It can't be. It, it, it can't be. Verse, verse, verse 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Now we're switching. All right. Keep the table in your mind, but we're switching now to another furnishing called the candlestick or the lampstand. All right. And thou shalt make a candlestick or a lampstand of pure gold. A beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, his knops and his flowers shall be of the same. People of God, people of God, thou shalt make a candlestick and a, a candlestick or a lampstand would probably be a more accurate um, translation. But people of God, a lampstand, it's very, very, very the same, much, very much the same as our modern menorah. All right. Now, I'm pretty most of you know what a menorah is and you've seen that before. Um, most of you know what a menorah is and you've seen that before. Um, but if not, here you go. Praise the Lord. If not, here you go. Praise the Lord. And that's something, that's what it could, that, that's biblically for what we're about to look at. That's what this could have looked like. All right. Praise the Lord. And thou shalt make a candlestick, a lampstand of pure gold. Once again, value, value of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. Beaten work, beaten work, beaten work. Beaten work means that it was, beaten work means is that this gold was taken out. Of, the beaten work means that it, a, 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 a hammer was used. And it took out an entire mass of gold and not the following parts were made separately. All right. So it means that it was beaten with a hammer out of an entire mass of gold, a beaten work. And the, the candlestick should have been made out of pure gold. His shaft, his branches, the shaft people of God would have been the body of the candlestick or the lampstand, uh, which was in the middle of it. All right. And the branches, the branches, people of God, were the different parts of the candle going out from the sides. Uh, his bowls, people of God, his bowls were to be were, were to hold oil for the lamps. All right. The bowls, of course, were the top parts that held oil for the lamps. The knops, people of God. The knops and flowers were the decoration that were around that were around the lamp. They should all have been of the same. They should have all been what? Adorned of pure gold, praise the Lord, adorned. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. 
three branches of the candlestick out of the one side and three branches of the candlestick on on the out of the out of the other side now he says six branches shall come out of the sides of it now if you look at this closely people of god six branches now if, if you look there's a centerpiece all right and then you see there's three on each side those are the six branches that they're talking about not talking about the center part the three branches on or the three parts on the other side and the whole emblem is to make it look like a tree all right so that's the whole picture in your mind make it like a tree branches here and there's there's one there's one trunk so to speak praise the lord one trunk or center there and all of these parts are connected. Now you tell me what that sounds like. Uh, and we, we read it a few weeks ago, uh, uh, how we are the branches connected to who? Jesus Christ, who is the vine. And that's somewhat close to this. When Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. All right? Here we are. Six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the candlestick on one side. Three over here and three on the other side. People of God uh, out on the other side. Verse 33, three boughs made like unto almonds with a snop and a flower in one branch and three boughs made like almonds in the other branch with a, a snop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. Now, people of God, this verse, this verse, people of God, tells us that three boughs made like almonds with a snop and a flower in one branch. Boughs, people of God, were the parts that held the oil in it for the lamp, all right? Those are those parts at the top that you see. All right, made like unto out, well, people, these are these parts right here, all right? These are these parts right here, made like unto almonds, all right? They, the decoration would be that of an almond, people of God, and the other branch uh, would be like that of an almond, and, th and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a snop, with a, a snop and a flowers. They were decorations, the decorations that you see on this. All right. So the Lord says that it's going to be decorated and all of that. The lampstand or the candlestick should be decorated because this would be the light for the tabernacle. This would be the light. All right. This would be the light that would be in the a light that would be in the tabernacle. The light that would, be, that would be in the tabernacle. And so the Lord gives these instructions. All right. So in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. All right. There will be six branches, one main. So you can say trunk coming out and then there will be uh, three on each side. Verse 34. And the candlestick shall be four boughs made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. Now, knops and their flowers, once again, are decorations. And the candlestick shall be four boughs made like almonds. All right. And the boughs, people of God, which were to hold oil for the lamps. All right. The boughs, which which held oil for the lamps. All right. Would have been looked would have looked like almonds with their snops and with their knops and their flowers. They would have been greatly decorated Four boughs. And there shall verse 35. And there shall be a snop. A, 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 keep in mind, a snop, a, a, a knop rather is what a decoration under two branches of the same. And a knot under two branches of the same, and a knot under two branches of the, of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. So, people of God, these these they would be decorated uh, precisely. All right, two 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 branches or two parts of it. Uh, would have two knots or decorations of the same. The other two would have two decorations of the same. And um, the other two would have two decorations of the same. And they would look alike. See this one right here, they would have two decorations of the same and they would and they would look alike. All right. Praise the Lord. And it would and it would go Tim, it goes as you could say, and it would go there, people of God, two by uh, two and two and two. Their knots and their branches shall be of the same. All of it shall be one bead work of pure gold. Their knops and their branches shall be the same. Their decorations and their branches shall be of the same, all right? They should all be what? Made of pure gold. Shall be one beaten work of pure gold. They should all be made of pure gold. Once again, value, all right? Pure gold, purity, clean, clean. And, 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 and that's that's what God calls us. He calls us to, and as the Lord called, he called them then to do that. But the Lord requires us to do something too. Now let us therefore what? Present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, 
and acceptable to God. And that's what Romans 12 verse 1 teaches us. And thou shalt make the seven laps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, and that they may give light over against it. The lamps of the lampstand, the tabernacle represented, of course, God's throne. And Revelation verse 4 to 5 says that there are seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. And in this verse, the Lord tells Moses, they shall make seven laps thereof. And Revelation 4 verse 5 says there are seven lamps of fire before the throne. Revelation 4 5 says, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Here is the reading of God's word. So keep in mind, the tabernacle was to be an emblem of God's throne. All right. A, sim a symbol of that. All right. And so here we see a connection. And they shall light the lamps thereof. Since the tabernacle was completely was a, was a, con a covered tent, the really only source of light they had was the light of the lampstand. And and so we are called to do the same thing. Jesus said to us. Jesus said in Matthew five verse fourteen to sixteen that we are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Jesus compares us to, to that of a candlestick. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So yes, just as these were lights in that dark area, we are called to be lights. And we're not lights because of ourselves. We're lights because the light of the world stepped out of heaven. All right. And we're glad about that. We're glad about that. We're glad about that. As, as, as first Peter two, nine says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priest and a holy nation, a, a, a holy nation, a peculiar people called out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his praises. All right. And so we have been called out of, of darkness into the light of the Lord and to what live for him. So just as those lamps were set. All right in the tabernacle, our calling is to be lights as well in the world. Praise the Lord. And the tongues thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. The tongues, the tongues were the wick trimmers you used to trim the wick. And the snuff dishes, people of God, were the trays. They should have all been of pure gold in this tabernacle. Pure gold, once again, value. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. A talent of pure gold shall a talent of pure gold was about 75 pounds, shall he make it with all these vessels. And look, verse 40, and look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. The Lord says, Make them the way I told you to make it, make it the way that I've instructed you to make it in this mount. Do as I told you to do, make them after this pattern. Do what I've entrusted you and told you to do. The so people of God, yes, as we've seen here in this, this uh, we call it a menorah, you know, especially Jews call it a menorah. And, you know, and that's what it means. So, of course, yes, yes, again, you have, you have the center stem, you have the branches coming out of it, you have the branches coming out of it. You have the bowls, which were used to hold the oil for the lamp, which are these things right here at the top that is holding it up. All right. And so we thank God. All right. Which are these things at the top that are holding it up. And so we thank God for that. All right. Which are holding it up and uh, which are holding it up. And we thank God for that. All right. So let's let's close out tonight. And we thank God. So what do we take? What do we take? We know that we can find Jesus all throughout the Bible, even in the Old Testament. All of this stuff connects to him. Once again, you heard the language of branches and all of that. The idea of the lampstand was to look at a tree. All right. And branches coming out of this one main trunk or stem, or some could say even a vine. And Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 1, I'm going to read this. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Verse 2, every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. 
Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatever ye will. Ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Here is the word of the Lord. That's John 15, verses 1 to 8. And so we see a connection there. And we're also called to be the light of the world. And as we saw people, even with the table of showbread, Jesus has become, has, is the bread of life. As he said in John chapter 6, verse 36, he's the, John chapter 6, verse 35, rather, he's the bread of life. And so we thank God. We thank God for that. And, um, and, and we can eat of him. And, and, and we never hunger anymore. And we thank God for that. And because of him, we also have fellowship with God. So I hope you took something tonight. I hope you learned something historically. Hope you learned something to take with you. Hope you learned something, a reminder that you are the light of the world, people of God. I hope you're, uh, you, 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 you're, you're reminded to stay connected to the Lord. All right. And I, 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 I just hope you took something. Praise the Lord. Took something. Now, there's somebody that could break that down better than me, but I just thank God for what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me through study, all right, and through what, um, and, and just and just through what God has, and just what God has spoken tonight, all right? And so I encourage you, people of God, to join me next week as well uh, for Bible study, um, and we'll be looking at plans for the tabernacle. We looked at the furnishings, the, th uh, the furnishings of the tabernacle, but now we're going to look at the plans for the tabernacle. What are exactly the plans for it? All right. All right. And um, Moses, the Lord is still going to be talking to Moses. And the Lord was going to do that a lot because Moses had a good, had a great assignment in front of him. And he needed to communicate with the Lord if he was going to handle that assignment. All right. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercy, your loving kindness, your long suffering, your patience, your tender mercy. We give you honor and glory and praise that you have allowed us to be together tonight to study your word. Thank you, God, for this privilege and opportunity to hear what you are saying to us even now through the scripture. To learn, to, to, to learn of your character and to learn of you through your scripture. Thank you tonight. We love you and we worship you and we give you praise. Thank you, God, for bringing us to another day. Thank you for bringing us to this time and this point in our lives. Thank you, God, that you have allowed us to see this day that you have made. How grateful we are. God, we come before you tonight. First of all, yes, continue to say thank you for all that you've done. We pray tonight, God, for those war-torn places. We pray that you would send your peace in those places. God, we pray that you would send your peace in those war-torn places. And we come against any war and bloodshed. God, we know that even in these last days that we are looking at Scripture fulfilled. And people still refuse to believe the Bible, but we're looking at Scripture fulfilled. As we see nation rise up against nation and all of these things happening, but it doesn't mean that we should stop praying. We still pray that you would have your way and that there'll be peace. We pray for a foretaste of that peace. Looking forward for that day when peace shall reign over all this earth. We thank you. Lord, we pray tonight that you would bless and that you would keep Ukraine and Russia Israel, Palestine, and Gaza there. We pray that you would bless Sudan. And we didn't even mention Haiti and all the unrest happening in these places. We pray, God, all the demonstrations happening around the world, even in our country. Those demonstrations happening because it was happening in Israel and Palestine. What's happening there, the genocide that's happening there. God, we pray, yes, what's happening is wrong. And, and what's happening is wrong there. And life is being lost, we know. But Lord, we pray for peaceful demonstrations. And that in these demonstrations, there be respect and that we don't lose respect for each other in these demonstrations. God, we pray that you would have your way now in the name of the Lord Jesus. When we look at what's going on in these wars and we say, God, how can you still be in this? Well, God, we know you are yet there. 
And we sometimes say like the psalmist, how long, oh Lord, but God, we know you are ever present in trouble. You don't flee or run when there's trouble. You are ever present in trouble. So yes, when we see when we see young children and women and just people in general being killed in this war, it hurts our heart and and, and all of, and all of that. It aches, but God, we ask, we know you're in it, and we trust your sovereign hand in it. We believe that you're in it. We know that you're in it because we know that you are ever present, and so we thank you tonight. We pray for those who are sick in their bodies. There are so many that are sick among us. And God, we pray for them. We pray, God, for my great-grandmother, Mrs. Maddie Goss. I pray that you touch her now in the name of Jesus. Touch her in her body in the name of the Lord. I pray, God, for um, uh, Miss Lucy Hall. Touch her and bless her tonight. Continue to touch her in her body. I pray, God, that you would bless even Miss uh, Mrs. Eileen Miller. Continue to touch her in her body and heal her and bring her through. God, we pray t- tonight that you would bless uh, Miss Lucille Hall's uncle, uh, Thomas Jackson, who's in the hospital with low oxygen levels. I pray, God, that you would bring his oxygen levels to where they need to be. I pray, God, that you would help and that you would sustain in that situation. And that you, oh God, and that you, oh God, would stand by him now. Support him. Bring him through. Be the one that we know you to be. A healer. A miracle worker. And we thank you. We pray, God, for Mary Fergus tonight. Pray that you would touch her and that you would help her in her body. You know the situation there. And we pray that you would heal her. You are the one who heals us. And we trust your character. And we believe, God, that you are still Jehovah Rapha. Touch her now. God, we pray that you would bless and that you would keep even uh, even uh, all of those that are sick tonight. You know them all. And even if we may forget or we, we may not name them, Lord, you know every single one. And we pray that you would touch each and every one of them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Mr. Yura Mallory, continue to touch her as well. And strengthen her, we pray. In Jesus' name, God, I pray tonight that you would bless and that you would keep, that you would bless and that you would keep each and every one. I pray, God, for those dealing with mental health issues. So many people dealing with those. And, and, and a lot of times we as the church can deal with mental health in a bad way. And so, God, and, and, and sometimes we can demonize mental health issues uh, or say that it's a demon and not really deal with it. Because we're honest, demons and the Holy Ghost can't live in the same place. So we understand, we understand that if somebody is saved and they got the whole and they have the Holy Ghost, so, and then we say it's a demon, something wrong with that. So God, we pray right now that you would help us as church to get beyond those stigmas that we use to try to get to try to to try to say somebody has a demon and help us to reach out and help and be church and light in darkness so that we can tell people so that we can tell people about uh, the hope that they have in you, God, in the midst of these mental health issues and depressions that they may be dealing with. And so, God, we pray that you would have your way. Now, there are people who are not saved that are dealing with them, and we ask, God, that you would lead them to that hope and that you would show them that hope. And those Christians, yes, who have the Holy Ghost and are saved, and who have the Holy Ghost and are saved, and have mental health issues, we pray, God, that you would that you would draw them deeper and deeper and deeper into you, and that we don't tell them they have a demon, but rather help them as church community. God, we pray that you would bless and that you would keep each and every one. Bless those, yes, who are dealing with depressions and anxieties. Let them know they don't have to be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, they can make their request known to you, our God. We pray tonight that you would bless and that you would keep, uh, and that you would keep God, uh, that you would keep um and that you would keep each and every one. We pray tonight that you would uh, that you would bless those who are sick in their spirits, those that don't know you, that they come to know you, that their testimony might be falling in love with you is the best thing they've ever done. And Lord, help us to be as we heard tonight, that light of the world, the light of the world, so that people can come and say, we want to be in this light. We're tired of being in darkness. We want to be in this. And we know that they can't say that unless your spirit draws them. So Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would draw them now to the Lord. And that, Lord, before they die, that they would accept you as their Lord and Savior. Because what's beyond death, that's a bad price to pay for not accepting Jesus. So, Lord, we pray that before they go, that you that, 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 you're, that you would prick their hearts. And that, God, they would have a willing yes in their spirits 
to follow you. And God, we ask that in the name of Jesus. We pray tonight that you would bless and that you would keep each and every one of us. We ask tonight that you would encourage us and support us. Bless our government, our leaders, our government officials. Everyone, bless your church. Let it continue to stand up and be what you what you have called her to be. Your church is your, your church is your bride. And so we thank God, Jesus, for the church being your bride and the body in your body. Lord, we ask that you would bless your church, continue to let your church, we know the church isn't going anywhere, but we ask that your church will continue to stand up and be what you have called her to be, a church that a, a church that loves and that cares and welcomes everybody and says there is somebody by the name of Jesus who loves you and welcomes you and says come, but it's, it's your invitation to accept. And so Lord, we ask that we would be that church that loves, but still preaches the word of God, and still tells people that yes, that, it's, that, that, that we need to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We ask that we would just be what you have called us to be. We ask God that you would bless us, that you keep each and every one of us, support us and stand by us, guide us and protect us. Oh God, our Father. Bless us, we ask, and we and we ask all these things in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. And we and we say amen, amen, and amen. People of God, now God bless you and God keep is my prayer. Uh, we'll be back here again on uh, Friday at 7.30 for prayer as we uh, do as the scripture teaches us, pray without ceasing. And the Bible says Jesus told a parable that men ought to always pray and not to faint. All right. So we're going to be here uh, again on um, Friday at 7.30 for prayer and Sunday morning worship on Sunday for Holy Trinity Sunday. We, yes, we have a whole Sunday dedicated to celebrating the Trinity. And people attack us for celebrating, the, for, for talking about the Trinity. But it is biblical. Yes, it is a biblical concept. And so we'll talk more about that on Sunday. All right. But we thank God for that. And we give God praise for that. God bless you. See you on Friday at 730 for prayer. God bless you.